This is a story of serendipity, of how initially a researcher did animal experiments using implants and found those implants being stable in the bone and impossible to remove without using uh, some sort of tools. But this was an unusual researcher, you see. He, he was able to draw clinical conclusions from his findings. Most researchers are, are mainly interested in writing a scientific paper about their findings and that's it. But this researcher was different. Peringva Brodermark from the University of Gothenburg in Sweden, he understood clinical implications. And he started, he was to start off with oral implants. Uh, and uh, he, he, he found them to be directly bone anchored in the bone with whatever histological techniques we had in those days. And they, with time, when we had learned to master all the things, gave rise to very good clinical results and then started a lot of spin-off products to use this discovery to help other patients. That's what I'm going to talk about uh, in this lecture, uh, the, the, the osseointegrated oral implants and the various types of spin-off products and how it was to be a little bit in the uh, what we saw as the clinical at least research frontier but then also we were the first to find the clinical problems that, that came and how to deal with those wasn't always very, that easy. Today I believe oral implants and other implants are here to stay as for the foreseeable future and we have a number of benefits from them. We see how they increase in usage every year. We place in the world between one and two million hip joints today. We place between 15 and 20 million uh, oral implants annually uh, and, and, and uh, the, the future seems to be uh, growing with even more biomaterials used to replace body function.